You chewing on something? Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. I'm out here in the greenhouse. I was going to start a video and then I noticed the sun is kind of setting. I got a late start today and I came out here and I looked at the trees and everything needs watering. It's above freezing today, quite a bit above freezing, another warm day. And I noticed a lot of my trees are starting to break dormancy now, including my larches. I'll show you a look at those. So if I come down here underneath the bench, this larch at the back, this is always the first one to come into leaf or needles. You can see the green on it. And yeah, that's always the first one to come out. And then I was looking at the one in the front and it all looked dormant except down here in this branch, there's one green shoot sticking through right down here. And on the tree back here, I, there's some green shoots on it down there. And the tree back here, there's some green shoots right there. Oh, and this one, green shoots there. So it is, it's emerging. It's coming out of its winter sleep, which means I can do the detailed pruning on this forest soon. I can certainly start on this tree. The reason I leave this detailed pruning until spring is I like to know what buds are alive and what buds are dead. Uh, usually I don't get any dead buds, but I have in the past. I've had some branch die back, and that's usually uh, a really harsh winter or something that's just kind of killed off branches. Or sometimes they got shaded out, you know, when the growth got too thick on these trees. So I always... I don't want to be, you know, pruning back to buds and then find out those buds are dead and then I've killed off the whole branch. So I always wait until spring, until the buds start emerging like this. Then I can prune the tree, do a detailed pruning of the branches, and I know everything I'm pruning back to is a living bud or a living branch. So that will be coming up. The pruning of the larches will be coming up very, very soon. Behind my larches here is my cedar forest, my cedar avatar grove. And you can see it's lost its winter colors on the main tree. It's nice and green. These ones back here still have their winter colors. They're kind of a bronzy color. I imagine they'll start turning uh, to the green colors fairly soon if this warm weather keeps up. We are supposed to go cold again. So maybe that'll save these trees from breaking dormancy. Down here, I have my amber maples. You can see they're starting to leaf out. So they can also get a detail pruning now that it's starting to leaf out. Over here, I have the forsythia cuttings that Eric and Emma brought to me. You can see they're actually flowering now, which is kind of exciting. It sure seems like spring here in the greenhouse, that's for sure. My birch here, I can see a green leaf coming on that, so it's definitely starting to bud out. And I think my other birch here too. That hasn't leafed out, but the buds are certainly swelling. My Cascade Cedar here, it had a real dark bronzy color, but now you can see it's turning a nice green color. So it's definitely starting to break dormancy. Down here under this bench, the willow, you can see all the shoots in the willow are leafing out. The cotone aster down here, it's starting to leaf out. And over in my northern bog forest planting, the larches are leafing out on this, on this planting, especially in this corner. I'm sure the other larches won't be far behind. I can see all the buds are swelling on them. In the corner here is my small leaf linden and I can see all the buds are turning kind of a greenish yellow. They're swelling up. That's starting to break dormancy. 
that's a look at all the trees in my greenhouse here that are starting to break dormancy. The question is, what do I do about it? Those new leaves that are coming out on your trees are very tender at first. And if you have them indoors, like in a garage or a, a garden shed where they don't get a lot of light, you can't just move them directly outside. Otherwise, they'll get burned by the sun. They're not used to that kind of intensity of light. So if you do bring them from in, indoors to your garage or your shed, outdoors, make sure they're in the shade and only bring them out when the temperature is above freezing. You don't want those new leaves to get a hard frost on them because they, it will kill them. They'll fall off the tree and then the tree has to generate either another set of buds that come out or more leaves off of the existing branches uh, depending how severe the frost is. So the tree could die if you get bad frost damage on it in spring. It may not just have enough energy to kind of generate a second flush of growth and the tree could just die, especially if it's weak. So you have to be very, very careful in spring. If your trees do leaf out early, treat them very, uh, baby them. Uh, make sure they don't get frost and they don't get too much sunlight at first. Kind of slowly transition them, transition them to the sun. Now, even the trees in the greenhouse here, uh, the light from the glass kind of blocks a lot of the UV rays. So I can't just take a tree from the greenhouse here and put it outside directly in sun because it'll also burn the leaves. So I've kind of got to put them out on cloudy days and kind of get them used to full sun eventually over a period of maybe a couple of weeks. The light is fading fast here, but I think I do have enough time today to do a little bit of bonsai work, just kind of cleaning up my Royal Oak seedlings or my English Oak seedlings. Here is a look at the Royal Oak seedlings that I collected last fall. This is just some of them. I gave a lot of them away. This is what I have left. And you can see the oaks keep their leaves on for most of the winter. They're all starting to fall off now. And they're falling down on top of the soil. And it's really hard for me to tell if these trees need water or not because the ground is covered with leaves. I can't tell if the soil is dry or wet or what it is. So today I'm going to do a cleanup on these seedlings and also see if any of them need pruning. I have my golden root rake here and Tom from the YouTube channel Grow and Clip Bonsai for Seniors sent me another golden tool and it is a long spoon. There it is there. There it is there. <laughs> and he sent the spoon to me because I can use this spoon, get a scoop of soil and reach into my forest and kind of put the soil where I want it or gravel or whatever I want. And it'll reach into those big forest plantings. So I think it'll be really handy. So thanks a lot, Tom. That's an awesome spoon. All right, it's time to get the leaves cleaned up on my oak trees. Now you'll notice that oaks keep their leaves over the winter and the reason that for that is it protects all the buds on the branches and the tree from the cold winter winds. It's like a windbreak and it's very effective in protecting all those tender buds. So in spring it naturally sheds its leaves exposing the buds to sunlight and the new leaves grow in once again. So I'm just going to remove all the old leaves off the trees, just kind of leaving my little seedlings there. And I'll have to clean up all the leaves off the forest floor here. Now these will be arranged into a forest. I have my older royal oaks that I'm growing. There's a couple of them that I'm growing as kind of specimen trees. And these will be going into a royal oak forest. I think it'll be quite nice. So I can see in the soil, there's some wet spots where the water got down to the soil and then underneath some of the piles of leaves, the soil is quite dry. I'll show you that. So there's a look at the soil surface and you can see the soil is bone dry in this area. And over here, it's watered quite nicely, nice and dark. So I'll be glad to get these leaves removed so I can water this these seedlings properly. So, you know, the ones on this side of the planting won't dry out and these ones will live. They'll all get an even level of moisture. 
Now these pawn baskets here, they belong to Connor and I have to return them to Connor. So once I repot these in spring, Connor will finally get his pawn baskets back. And I think I have another one of his over here. There's a cedar planted in it right down here. And do I have another one? Um, I don't think so. Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> the whipcord cedar's in one too. So I've got one, two, three, four, four of these pond baskets to return to Connor. These Royal Oaks have really, really small leaves on them naturally. They're uh, really cool trees. Here's a bit of the original acorn that the seed grew out of. Kind of cool. I finished removing the leaves from the trees and the surface of the soil. I thought I had watered these plantings thoroughly, but obviously not. I'll show you the soil. Here is a look at the surface of the soil with the leaves removed, and you can see there's areas that are just bone dry. In fact, most of it, especially this planting, there's very little water that got to the soil. It must have run off the edges and down the edges of the pond basket. And this one too, you can see there's a few areas that got water, but most of it is very, very dry. So the next step is to get these seedlings watered thoroughly. All right, here I go with the water. Oh, now that's hitting the soil and soaking in. Give it a really, really good watering. Okay, I think that is good. They're both thoroughly watered. It was nice to get my oak seedlings all cleaned up, watered properly, and ready for spring. It's one more job that I don't have to do when the real spring does come. And that is all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone.